Hello everyone, I am Jim Huang. I'm from Taiwan. I am the first whistleblower who exposed the 17th Kamapa or Gentile George's sex scandal and power abuse. And I'm Wu Hanyi from Hong Kong who stand up to say me too to support Jane Huang to expose Kamapa or Gentile George's misbehavior. Today we are going to share our experiences about how the Kamapa got our contact and his first calling. And we are sure he has done the same trick to many women victims. So since year 2000, there have been a lot of information about Kamapa or Genchene Doje everywhere from advertisements, from mass media, in China and Hong Kong. So I was influenced by this information. Even in school textbook, it said Ramaba is a bodhisattva, very compassionate, and he will lead all sentient beings to be free from samsara and attain enlightenment, something like that. And I was misled to believe that he is a Buddha and he will help all sentient beings to be free from suffering, from samsara. And so I was so eager to go to India and I left my family, I left Hong Kong, my job, I reside. And actually, I remember there was a permanent teacher job offer, but I declined because I thought a spiritual journey to enlightenment is more important. So I left everything for India to see Gamapa. And after a couple of private audiences with Gamaba. He asked me for my name. So I, he gave me a pen and a paper, a piece of small paper. Um, then I wrote my Chinese name. And after that, he asked me to write down my phone number on another paper that he gave me. Then I write, I wrote that number. It's a 10 digits Indian phone number. Actually, I shouldn't write that number if I realize that um, he was just going to play with me manipulate me, abuse me. I didn't know that at that time. So I gave my phone number and the whole thing started. And the next day, after I gave my phone number to him, in the morning at 8 a.m., it was very early morning, he called me. He made his first phone call to me. At that time, I was in Sarah College. I was ready to go to a class. And then, so I, I said to him, I have to go to class. Can you call tomorrow? Thank you. Then we ended conversation very quickly. Yeah, and the next day, the same time, 8 a.m., he called me again. And he said, it's better, it's the best that you don't tell it to others. Then I thought it was a, maybe a secret guru that a guru in Vajrayana will use to uh, for private teaching, you know. So I said, okay, but actually I already told 
to our friend who is from Germany. Then he asked me if I have internet connection in my computer, my laptop. I said, no, I don't have this kind of connection, internet connection. And then he told me to buy an internet bar from the Ramshala market. Then I followed his instruction. Then I bought the internet bar. And then he called again to me. And then he told me to download Skype. I followed him and then I downloaded Skype to my laptop. And he also told me that his guy name is so.boy.99. And then I remember this. And then after that, we connected. So when he made his first phone call to me, I was in this college. This, this college, you see this? This college, it is Sada College in Gangra District, Dharamshala, India. So it was around 2011. Yes, 2011, I was in Sada College. It's around uh, uh, the end of September. I can't remember the exact date that he called me for the first time. I didn't remember, but it was around that time. I met Zong Pinter in 2008 when I went to graduate school in the United States. Since then, I followed him and viewed him as my root guru, which means you listen to his words and obey his instructions to get enlightened. It was not until 2012 did I go to India for the first time to join Zong Sakinta's teachings at Deer Park Institute in Beer. And I met the 17th Kamapa under Zong Sakinta's encouragement and request. In fact, I was never really interested in the Kamapa's teachings or his lineage because they are so rigid and not modern to me. They are just not speaking to me. Not if to fulfill Zong Sakinta's requirement and realize the commitment to the Guru, I would never go to the Kamapa. Later, in October 2014, when I told my secret relationship to Zong Sakinta, he soon began instructing me how to interact with and influence the Kamapa. I remember in total, I had three private audiences and two public audiences with the Kamapa. And every time it happened during Zong Sakinta's pujas or teachings when Kamapa always nearby. Anyway, it was the last audience in mid-April 2013 that the Kamapa asked me for my contacts during the private audience, which surprised me big. In that audience, I asked him what my next step could be because I just quit my job and felt uncertain about my future. He said, you can work for me. I was so stunned and felt honored that, wow, His Holiness asked me to help his activities. I would do my best. In fact, before this, Zhongzhou Kinsey had a Chinese female disciple named Alex Kong, Kong Ning from Shanghai. She told me that the Kamapa had asked her to translate the book, The Miraculous 16th Kamapa. This book. Also at the time, I was helping Kinte Foundation to translate communicates as a volunteer for a couple of years. Therefore, I thought it's great if I can help translate books for His Holiness. Definitely, I can do that. Therefore, when the Kamapa asked me to leave my contacts, I gave him my email address and mobile phone number without hesitation. 
I remember I was so nervous that I couldn't find a pen and just clutched a piece of paper in my hand, shaking. The Kamapa seemed impatient and he handed me a pen. I jotted down my contacts and then the private audiences ended. Anyway, it was just a piece of rag paper, it didn't look official at all. So honestly, I didn't take it seriously because I thought he might just say it, not really mean it. And it would not probably happen quick. Maybe it, take, it took one or two years. However, the Kamapa called me one month later at the end of May that year. First, I got a short email without any signature, just writing. I am the one you have met at Kyoto Monastery. The phone number you have left seemed wrong. Would you please kindly give me the correct one? I was like, who? I didn't give any Tibetan lamas my email at Kyoto Monastery because what I was thought what I thought was those lama secretaries or staff. But rechecking the email address carefully, I found it actually named O T D. And suddenly I realized that, oh my God, it's old gentleman Dorje's shorthand, it's his holiness. So I replied him, immediately apologized and wrote my mobile phone number again and told him how to dial the correct country code. A couple of days later, the Kamapa called at 11 around midnight. That phone call was short, only lasted for five minutes, but I clearly remembered our conversations. Again, when I answered the phone, I was like, who would call so late? Anyway, I answer. I answer it, and there came a male voice saying, "It's me." Who? Again, I was confused, but in a sec, I realized, "Oh man, it's His Holiness!" I couldn't help shouting, "Your Holiness, Fa Wang Ah, in Mandarin." And I tried to greet him and compose myself to be prepared to take the job he was going to give me. Yeah, he just chatted saying, oh, this time the phone number works. And I went, how have you been, your holiness? He said, I was OK. And you? And I was thinking, oh, he must be very busy and have no friends. And he was a poor guy being detained. I should be his friends talking to him. Back, but I actually didn't know what to talk about and where to start. And then he went, what movies did you go to lately? I went, uh, recently I went to Journey to the West, Conquering the Demons. It's a Hong Kong movie directed by Stephen Chow. This one. I kept going. The leading female character was cool and fun, very impressive. Yet I felt a bit embarrassed and paused because I felt it's improper to talk about the movie's romantic plots with the monk. And then the come up and went. Didn't the leading male character become a monk in the end? That's too bad. I was like, uh, yeah, right, but you cannot help it. The plot sets up that way. But I still felt the conversation went strange. Anyway, just as what I was about to ask what kind of job he would give me, he went like, well, that's it. I got to go and goodbye. So I said, sure, please take care. Goodbye. I was surprised that he called, but still didn't think too much, just taking it as a greeting call. Yeah, he called again two weeks later when I was in Vancouver joining Zongsa King's private teaching call, Lauri Yeshe Ninpo. He gave me that book. I stayed at the dorm room at the University of British Columbia and I got the Kamapaha's phone call again. In the, sec, in, the, in the second and the third calls, he tricked me into CyberSec. I was shocked, uneasy, frightened, and had no idea that his abuse game begins since then.